You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaprota film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome to the Never Daily Podcast, your daily dose of flavored yeah mystery you're doing good buddy if you think if you think red dye number five is bad for you i always heard it was yellow dye number five red dye number three they're all bad for you i think i've talked about this in middle school there was somebody started a rumor that yellow dye number five which is a popular dye in mountain dew Make sure your penis small. Oh, wow. That So did you? Was it too late for you? I or? kept drinking Mountain Dew, and it turns out it's true. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. Red dye 40. So there's, there's correlations between yellow dye and sleep problems uh, and red 3 and uh autism and uh it it negatively affects people with autism and sensory processing disorders uh and yeah it's there's some real deal what bothers me and i don't know how we change this but i just i mi- i love the i covered it a little bit but i love that europe refuses to add anything to their food unless it can first be proven not to harm humans, where in the United States we have to take whatever they're going to throw in it and then go to court to, with all of the data proving that it's hurting humans to get it out of our food. Yeah, and like with in the case of dyes, there's not even a poor purpose aside from coloring, right? Yeah, yeah, I I don't know, but th- but then again, and that's why all the British food is brown and gray. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing that doesn't make any sense to me is if we are such a if we're a country that consumes so rapidly, then you would think that we don't need the preservatives for shelf life and everything because we're consuming at such a rate. You'd think it'd be re- reversed. Like there would have to be less fillers and less preservatives in our food. Because we're going to buy 10 to 1 boxes of Cheerios or something. Jess hates this kind. This is what I'm talking about, Jess. You sit back there and you and you give your, your mean face to me. No. You drink, you drink your buttermilk from your measuring glass. <laughs> yeah. You just, just so judgy. See, wouldn't it be the opposite, though? Because of the high demand, they do have to put preservatives in it because they have to have a surplus of it. Okay. That's a good point. But everything still has a eat by date, right? And and so that stuff can't be on the shelf too long. I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking if mm, what about that? <clears throat> I, I'm th- I'm I'm thinking you don't need I I just don't know how you fix I don't know how you fix that. Because the FDA just approves stuff and then it gets put in our food and and why isn't there like a school board? Where parents can go and 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 say, oh, hey, you're about to put red, uh, red danger dye fifty seven in our food. We looked at it. We're like, N- we don't want that. Why isn't there like a school board kind of thing where we have visibility on this stuff? Yeah, and how do pop rocks work? Mm. Ah, good question. Oh, I think it's a chemical reaction, actually. Yeah, it would be a chemical reaction. Everybody loved, I never cared for them. It was like having little firecrackers going off on your tongue. Yeah. I didn't appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of red dyes and dyes and pop rocks, probably. This is a good conversation. What candy, what candy were you like, no, thank you? No uh, licorice of any kind. Really? And Twizzlers. Okay, that's weird. Does Twizzler fall under the category of licorice? Yes. Twizzlers always reminded me of chewing on a Barbie doll head. <laughs> That's what I would rather eat Barbie doll heads than our legs. 
just a, a slot. It's got a slot taste. If you think really hard, you can taste the cherry. And it's just plastic chewing up little plastic ropes that have slightly flavored with cherry. You're, you're, you're right. Like a whisper of it. It's like eating a really soft candle. And then if you eat too many, you're like, yes. what am I doing? Why am I? I always have to look at the packaging when I'm one Twizzler and like, I don't even know if I'm supposed to eat this. Is this edible? <laughs> the ones that get me, the ones I was always like, no, I don't know why anyone eats this. Is there was these, there was these, I think they still make them. It's a licorice tube in the, in the center of it's hollow and they come in like pastel colors. So it's like pastel pink and a yellow and like a blue. Uh, but but they just taste like you're eating India ink. It, it they're the grossest things. What is it? I called? don't remember. It's like a licorice tube. They're like little. They they look like um. What are the little licorice? Uh, they're 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 white and pink. The the little licorice uh, uh licorice can candy coated licorice. Little pieces, good, good and plenty. I just stay away from anything licorice. Good and plenty. So I wouldn't know. So they're like a good and Who's plenty. Who's got the Pop Rocks info pulled up here? I think Jess shared it. Or maybe Chase did. But yeah, I was wrong. So. That was me. It's pressurized gas bubbles. And when they dissolve on your tongue or in water, they, the gas is released. So it's not a chemical reaction. Now I think about it. That I mean, I was a little fat boy. So, um. That was really the only candy that I had a no on. Like I was open for anything. As long as it didn't have licorice in it, I was good. What was your and black licorice tastes like you're eating I would call uh um shoe polish. Shoe polish. Yeah. It's like a solid shoe but, polish. That's what black licorice tastes but like. I must love shoe polish because I love me some black licorice. Like every time I'm at Ace Hardware and I go by the like Willie Wiley's Australian licorice bags, I'm like, oh, don't mind if I do. And I get like four flavors. Disgust. I mean, I, 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 will, I will admit that Jägermeister did not help my <laughs> like or dislike for licorice, black licorice either. <laughs> yeah, I've heard oh. that that's not good. They put me in the hospital twice. And after that, I... I just think Jaeger whenever I get around black licorice. So uh, I have a question. So when it came to your candy supply and your consumption of candy, some households were like, you know, uh, it's your fruity or chocolate. It's your money. You can, if you want to go down to Seven Eleven and get, or it was mom could I have three bucks. Like so, how did your mom handle candy? Um, we just didn't get it. You didn't get candy. So how did you, that's how she handled it. How'd you get it then? She would buy. So I was raised on cosmic brownies. <laughs> is that a, like a, um, is that what I'm thinking it is? It's a brownie. That's just looking back now, probably mostly plastic and chemicals um, with little colored pieces of chocolate. Oh, on top. On of top okay. So that was like what mom never was big on buying like, junk food but we did always have cosmic brownies was, a little, was it a little debbie yeah, yeah a little debbie are. and my girls love them okay uh this fun fact i don't share i didn't i was just talking to my parents about this um uh my dad was like there were times when we were so poor sam that uh that uh all we were eating was uh Loaves of bread that were give, given to us by, he said, do you remember our neighbor that had the bread, the bread bakery? And they had this like amazing, it's like any of your like, you know, she, she bread, bread stores now where it's like all the, all the grains and, you know, it's like, that's all they do is bread at the place. They had one of those and, and we, our shelves were all had always had this like amazing bread on it. As a kid, you you just want white bread, but you know we had thirty one thirty one nut wheat bread, you know. And he was like, "There was a time when like that's what we ate was just the bread, the bread from our neighbors." Yeah, but if it's from a legit bakery, oh, that's not that's pretty. It was good. You stuff. can spice up a piece of bread with some butter and toast it. Oh, 
We we were we were. Blessed. I'll just eat bread. Pot. I'll just eat slices of bread. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, my wife just a couple days ago started making peasant bread. It's like three or four ingredients, I think, and they make the most glorious. It's it it's not the kind of bread where it's like two little ingredients, and so you're like, yeah, no, this is good, and it's not good. It's like enough ingredients that that it, it tastes really good. And so she makes these little circle, like little, you know, pull, they're like a large plate size bread loaf. And it doesn't fit. That's what I called my paycheck whenever we first started doing TCK. Out here making this peasant bread. <laughs> <laughs> the only the only problem with peasant bread and those kind of breads is there's not a toaster in the world that can accept the slice from the loaf. You got to like customize each cut, each, each slice to, to make it work. Um, let me ask you this. Is it pretty there today? No, it's gloomy. It's beautiful. Here. Really? It's 72 degrees. It was beautiful yesterday and I busted out my mower and and pulled put a flat on it filled it up with gas broke it busted the rust off of it from the winter and now i feel like a big old sack of shit covered cocks yeah you were saying <laughs> just from the allergies i guess yeah. because i also went and bought two bales of hay and um, spread them out over the yard in the mud places where Bruno was running tracks because he's got like a a course that he takes around the yard. Yeah, and he's w- made a trench, and that just gets turns into mud. The the difference I will so I, say like, about spread hay. The difference I'd say because I've seen Bruno's course. Um, what's what's funny is it do, it doesn't look like a normal dog course it looks more like those aerial shots of german military pr- proceeding through a forest yeah. and there's even some dead bodies along the side it just, it looks very yeah warlike i got I, I picked those up yesterday <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll never not be scared yeah. of that dog start to stink hey uh I I did something different. Uh, I forgot I forgot that I had done this. I did something different over the weekend. Um, a million years ago, as I do, I I bought a really nice knife sharpening set uh, kit, and it, it's it, it's like it's you can swap out the 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 grit of these little plates, these little sanding plates, and they're on a bar, and it sets it at a proper angle and. And then you just, shh, shh, you know, and you just, you just sharpen your knives. And my wife said, you know what you could do if you wanted, you could take the whole kitchen block and sharpen all the knives. I was like, that's a great idea. Four and a half hours later. Autism porn. <laughs> I know you got so excited. I did. Four and a half hours later, I. I had listened to a, a healthy portion of an audiobook and cut and, and sharpened all the knives. I was pretty proud of myself. Um, actually, you know, the, I don't, I don't do a lot of one and done tasks where I'm like, and that is finished. There's always the tasks I seem to have to do are always like, okay, until this task rears its ugly head again, that is good enough. But this was kind of like, you know, it was nice. It, it was just, I sharpened all the knives. How long did that take? Four and a half hours. Okay. I mean, it. I just want to make sure it was worth it. I, I'm just saying it's not a fast process. It's not mechanical. It's not yeah, electric. And there were like, I think. Th- Knife sharpening is supposed to be done on the porch um, right at dusk <laughs> or right at, right at dawn <laughs> after the hay has been baled and you're waiting for Meemaw. Well, okay. To finish the, the flip the side, meatloaf. The flip side to this is I was like, I've got an idea because I I have a sad story. I had a I have an EDC, like an everyday carry knife, and I uh, bought it from myself a couple years ago, and I love it. I loved it. I can't find it now. I don't know where it is. It was like two hundred bucks, and I'm so sad. But um. While I was in there, they were like, we, we have a program where you can buy a kitchen knife a month 
And, you know, then by the end of the year, you've got the whole set, which sounds kind of weird, except for now kitchen knives are like really good ones are expensive. And then they, they have free sharpening and all that. So I told, I told my wife, I was like, well, we could do that. And she's like, no, let's just stick with the ones we have. So my alternatives is I don't, I'm not like, I don't know, it's me. So I don't, I, my solution to dull knives isn't going on Amazon and, and finding another whole knife block for 80 bucks. No, my solution is either sharpen the dead ones or we'll spend $712 <laughs> on a knife block set over the course you of a year. You would spend that much money on a knife block set? We get a Pioneer woman from Walmart. <laughs> $85. That's, uh, yeah. I, Raven I, I, in the background said, knife sharpening sounds like a very harbinger of doom kind of hobby. <laughs> and that's true. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Whenever I'm chilling in my shack out there off that desolate road, that's probably what I'll do. I'll just buy a big old bucket of dull knives <laughs> when I don't have any customers coming through and sharpen them and throw them in another bucket. But you have to have the you have to have the sharpening wheel out in invisible visible. You can't just do it in the back. You got to have it out, and it's got to be one of those like foot operated ones where it's like the wheel moves. No, 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 no. You're you've got it all fucked up here. Okay. No, no, no. I wear overhauls. Okay. Right, but I don't have a shirt on them on underneath them. Uh huh. I sit in a metal chair in front of the old rundown gas station waiting for. Waiting for teenagers to come by so I can tell them that they're going to die. <laughs> um, and it's not a rocking chair or anything. It's just an old metal chair. But I sit in it, but I don't sit straight up. I kind of slouch a little bit and I cross one leg, <laughs> just one leg. Okay. And I just sit there and I've got a little, a little sharpening block. And I just. Every five minutes you spit on it. I've got an old Ford hat. A really dirty Ford hat, <laughs> really dirty, and some stubble. The uh, and my face is old. The inside portion of both of your nipples are chafed because of the overhauls you're wearing. Oh, yeah. That's part. Of, that's what I signed up for. That's Harbinger of Doom <laughs> attire. <laughs> Got to have raw nipples. What would be amazing? I think we've covered this this way, but what would be amazing is that's the front, right? And then there's a door. And you go into the back and it's just like Stepford Wives, like your actual like living quarters. It's like, you know, Mozart's Beautiful. playing, Heaven's in there with yep. the kids. I have a dinner suit. Wait, no, no. There, there's, an, there's a solarium or an atrium between your actual <laughs> house and the danger and the harbinger of doom where there's still windows into the atrium. And that's where you do the, the once a day beating of your wife so people could see that happen. But exactly. then but she signed up for that. Heaven signed up for that too. Yeah. And whenever other people are in earshot, I call her Ma. Ma, right. And uh whenever it's just us, I say Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then, you know, they pull up, they're like, Yeah, we're just going for spring break. We heard there's an old abandoned mine out here, man. We're just I'm the jock and she's the cheerleader and that's the nerd. And why are we all hanging out? I don't know. Doesn't make any sense, but that's how we travel, apparently. That's the guy that wants to lose his virginity. He's kind of interested in the cheerleader, but she's not gonna give him any kind of ass or anything, and he's probably gonna die a sad death. But we're looking for the mines. Do you know where those are at? <laughs> You're going to want to hang a left <laughs> about a mile and a half down the road. You're all going to die. <laughs> Every one of you going to die. And then they immediately leave and I get on the phone and call the deformed freak that's responsible for the murders. <laughs> and I don't even have that accent anymore. I'm just like, hey, guy. Hey, hey, Jeffrey. <laughs> Because he's known by the newspapers as like the desert slasher, the faceless, the faceless head annihilator. And I just know him as Jeffrey Wallingstein. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Jeff, what's up, buddy? How you doing? How's the kids? Because they don't even know he's got kids because this is also what he does. He has he, he commutes to work. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, but how's the kids? Yeah, Fourth of July was good. It was good. How's it? Everybody's good. Good, 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 good. Are you at home right now? Are you on the clock? I just sent 
I just sent 16s. <laughs> Your way. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Asked if I had a charging station. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's going to take them 30 minutes to get there. You've got, yeah, you can finish dinner. <laughs> right. Tell Regina I said, hey. Okay. Oh, man. Do you, uh, do you ever think about that, like when you're playing an open world game, and you run like run up a mountain for a half hour, and you get to the top, and you're on a plateau somewhere, and and there's a there's a monster that you're supposed to fight. I'm like, why are you up here? Like, what are we stationed here? Like, why are you here? Yeah, just think about that. I like how the game ATV Off-Road Fury for PlayStation 2 dealt with barriers. And I don't know if you played that game, but it was big in Kentucky. Uh, Because one thing we Kentucky kids loved doing when we weren't riding ATVs was pretending to ride ATVs (laughs) on a video game. But whenever you got over to the barrier to like the end of the world, it would just shoot you. Straight into the air. Like like three miles. Like you would just fly. (laughs) Like you were shot out of a slingshot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the, the edge of the world. Hey, would you be interested in when I retire being the, you know, the the sack wearing slasher? No, or, I've got an idea who I'd be. What I, I know who I'd be. I'm looking for, I'm looking to, uh, to, to kind of get into this business. I need a partner. Jess is Jess, willing. Jess is willing. Uh, Chase, Chase is willing. I want to be okay. the, um, cause this is going to be a multifaceted. It's going to be, it's going to take a lot of move. It's got a lot of moving parts. I know everything looks sloppy from the outside. we got the decrepit gas station that has the big ma- manual pumps and everything, but this is all orchestrated. Everything is, it's going to take a lot of, I, I know what, an account. I know what I want to be. Uh, I want to be, I'm going to have to lose some weight for this role, but I will be the, um, the really creepy preacher that wears. Perfect. Jess can be the, we got to come up with a backstory for Jess though. She's got to be like an angry prom queen. Let me think for a second. She, she, she was killed by the football quarterback, um, and she's back from the dead. I'm sorry. You, you were you were coming up with a backstory for the preacher, but you got to keep in mind that a lot of times in horror movies, a preacher is a harbinger of doom. So you're kind of treading on my toes here a little bit. I need to see where you're going. Yeah. With so this. I think <clears throat> I think what it is 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 I um I know what it is. The preacher. Is always always appears right before the light goes out of the person's eyes, um, telling them that he warned them. You were warned by him. He warned you. He right, warned right, you. Right, right. And this is what you get for succumbing to the sins and the afflictions of the flesh. 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 But you know, you've got to die at the end of every single set of teenagers. We'll get a special yeah. effects, a makeup guy. Now the teenagers are actually going to die. We're not actually going to kill you right. though. Um, but you are going to have to die just so it all, so they get the whole experience right, right up until their death. Yeah. Of like, even if it's just us left, they're all already dead. We have to still kill me, kill you off to. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I just basically parrot the ominous foreboding. Uh, foreshadow. I, 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 I'm there to say you knew this was coming, cometh upon you. You know that, that's my role. I've got a feeling I chase. I got an idea for Jess. I've got you've got Jess. I've got Chase. Yeah, you st- tell me, Chase. Chase is the guy that intercepts the last survivor because we got to have somebody that tells our story unless this is all for nothing. right. There has to be one surviving female, always female, has to be a female. We need to make sure we don't kill all the females. There has to be one surviving female, preferably the one that didn't have sex the entire time they were at the abandoned mine shaft. Right. Um, and you chase a weight in an old, in an old beat up Chevy truck to drive down the road the second she stumbles out onto the road. Yep. And that'll be his job. Be like, oh, goodness, lady. And he's very friendly and understanding. 
but then he just takes her right back to my gas station. Okay, so when he's in her presence, he looks very innocent and everything. Everything leading up yeah. to that, he starts out, he's like in the, he's in the saddle of the mountain. He's up there just cooking pork over an open fire. And he, he he's like the gmork from Never Ending Story, the wolf, you know? He hears them giggle down in the valley and he looks up and he's like, no! Nah! You know, and then yeah. and then he's watching over. He's watching, and as they die, and then there's the one, and she starts running, and then from that until she, he meets up with her, it's just the Gamork vision where it's like him running through the forest. It's just his vision, yeah, right. And then he gets there. He's like, "Oh, hello, hi, yeah, oh, Nob, you need a ride?" And then yeah, he takes you back, her back. Yeah, because he's playing a good guy, right. Goodness, lady, what you what what is what's going on with you? You're gonna have to work on an accent, just so you know, Chase. Okay, I, you're gonna have to work on an accent now, okay, Jess. Jess, here's what I've got for Jess. Jess's backstory is she is she is scorned. She was scorned. She she was left in in the mountains by her lover at their house, right. and he never returned. Right. And so she sits just creaking in the rocking chair on the front. She's beautiful. Which is weird, but now you got to keep in mind she's the killer. Yeah, so she's creaking in the rocking chair, and the and they show up because the path to the mine goes right by her house. So they stop and they talk, mm. and she's got this like uh, the siren level, uh, you know, effect over the men, and so they make it up to the 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 mine, and one by one the men steal away in the night, and they come down to visit her. They each have a different excuse. And she's like, yep. she's uh, she sucks their souls out because she's scorned, and yep. she she thinks every. I don't man, know how we're gonna build that machine. Every man that comes to her door is is her her lover, and she and then, but she's angry because they left her. You'll use protection, Jess. And so she just. We're not animals. What's weird is she also uh, she speaks normal, but then when she's you're gonna get to fuck a lot of nineteen yeah. year olds. So that's when she's killing them, she goes into a German accent because her lover was German, and she said she doesn't talk. She references their 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 wieners as mine shaft, mine shaft, <laughs> and uh, you know I don't know. It's loose. It's loose. And like I said, Jess, you can commute to work. Yeah, you commute. You commute. Uh, we'll have a, a, a facade of a cabin built, and we'll have a back end just like a movie studio. Um, but just to make sure that the people we're killing, they don't get to see the back end of right. it. You got to hold the allure. Um, and and Je and yeah, we'll just get you. We'll order you like five work un work uniforms. We'll weather them so they look old and dirty, and and uh, you can just. Wake up, have have breakfast with your kids, send them off to school, have a cup of coffee, show up to the cabin, probably about seven in the morning. Actually, this is more of a second shift. Yeah, yeah. She's she's this late is afternoon. More of a second shift, like job. four to eleven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember in Red Dead Redemption? You need to be flexible with your schedule, by the way, because there's going to be some third shifts. Uh, probably a lot of third shifts. You're going to be working a lot of sixteen and eighteen hour days. Yeah. You're gonna be working a lot of doubles, but there will be. But it's on you. Pay over time. So yeah, your hours depend on your work ethic. Right. How quick? How quick can you knock these people off? And how quickly can you make a homestead by yourself? Because I don't know. Jess has never played it, but in Red Dead Redemption Two, uh, he comes across a woman, a beautiful woman in the woods, and she was building a homestead, be and sh her husband just disappeared, and so she's still building it. And she's just out there. And it's like the biggest, like, for super nerds, I'm sure they were like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is like yeah. the beginning to a porno. She's like, can you help me build this wall? And then you like kill a bear for her and stuff. So that's you. Oh, also. Uh, we also have to hire her stunt doubles. Yeah. Uh, because she can't be everywhere at the same time. But to them, it needs to seem like she is. Yes. She's appearing all the time. So we'll get some time. Jess silicone masks made. Um, she's constantly coming in and out of the woods. It's like, I just, she was, we left her at the cabin. How is she already here? It's like, that's your stunt double. And, and they're, and she's and, constantly leading them away. So she's always 40 feet away in a tree line and they see her in her camisole. And then she just like walks away into the woods and they're like, what? Wait, come back. And then, you know, they walk into the woods after her. 
We're going to make it work. We'll have some uh, Jess dummies. Yeah. It'll. I like Raven said that um, she says she's going to be the cashier in the gas station that is normal and says things like, oh, yeah, that guy out front, that's Kent. He's harmless. (laughs) But I'm not. harmless. No, you're not. I have a bucket of sharpened knives. Yeah. Well, dull knives. I guess you do have a bucket of sharp ones, too, though. Also, I've got to really start working out in my head this bathroom layout for the females because I've got to drill a hole in one of the walls. Yeah. And it's like, so I can watch them use the bathroom. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have somebody build this, this gas station. Yeah. Because it, you could go. So functionality wise, it could be like a Jack and Jill bathroom where there's access. Cause I know you all are commu- commuting, but I plan on living right. here. Yeah. Jess, uh, Jess actually commutes and she lives in one of those, uh, those, uh, those condominiums that are being built in every like town now, which they're like super, super thin. And like you get, you get views out of both, both sides of your apartment because they're that thin yeah. and the buildings like, you know, 15 stories tall and all they're full of Gen Z like kids that work downtown and they're paying $2,200 a month for That's where she lives. Cause, cause she has to surround herself Just, with in real life. Even she's gotten rid of her family. She has to surround. Just to see her work clothes closet. It's just got a bunch of 18th century heels. Yeah. And dresses and knives and <laughs> gray hairspray pearls. <laughs> Lots of, uh, topsy tails. So she can do an updo really quick. Baby, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to eat something quick because mommy has to get ready for work. (laughs) This is great. This is great. That end of the night after she's just killed 12 teenagers, (laughs) she's sitting at home. She gets home and her husband's like long day. And she's like, you have no idea. She's had sex with 19 men and killed 12 altogether. Three women and nine men. Just sitting in a chair, just rubbing her forehead. <laughs> like, fuck, I didn't know that this was going to. Just another day, another dog. He just, her husband just brings her a little four inch by four inch mirror with some lines of Coke on it. <laughs> just here, here, just take the edge off. Oh, thanks, hon. And then she's like, I think I'm ready for another ship. <laughs> oh, I'm getting called in. Kent just called. <laughs> The back back story is not even her husband knows, but she has AIDS and she's just been giving AIDS to everybody through the whole thing. It's the most boring <laughs> horror movie ever. <laughs> like, oh, that's just a slow burn movie. <laughs> okay. All the kills take 28 years. One of the one thing we have to do though is every good horror movie, and this one's honestly, let's be honest, this is a like an, a series. This isn't just one. But it needs a an object. There needs to be some creepy object, you know, that they find or that they use. Yeah. We'll have to figure that out. Let's see here. Uh mine shaft. See, I was really uh going a going the route of uh inbred uh kind of hills have yeah. eyes kind okay. of thing. And obviously Jess is gonna be needed needed to be makeup. Uh, well, okay. It works okay because, you know, like in The Hills Have Eyes and in, uh, oh no, what what are the ones, that, like the, the House of a Thousand Corpses? Uh, there's always like this striking character. She's just as demented as all the weirdos, but she's always, you know, put together, you know? Yeah. Maybe we, I don't know what the uh, child labor laws are on hiring babies, but she needs to have like a baby that she's protecting. Yeah, I like and that. that. There needs to be like an overlying like like message, like, oh, it's motherly instincts or something. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I still, we're, still on a, we're still in the developmental phases. You know, actually, I, I, I got an idea. So regarding the object, each one of us have an object that we leave with the deceased when we kill them. Mine are coins on the eyes, uh, 
Wait, you're killing well, people? No. When I when I, the preacher. when I when I come across someone that's died though, I put their I put coins on their eyes, but they have Raven just came up with this in the back door. There are coins with my face on them. <laughs> so, did I just throw it off because I'm not supposed to be killing people? I think you did. You need to fucking learn your goddamn role. Crap. Ah, that's her job. Exactly. Yeah. Play your role. I'm the old guy, the old creepy redneck inbred dude at the gas station. I don't kill anybody. Right. I just let them know that they are going to be killed. And I warned that I Chase is the guy that saves the last girl that's surviving and acts confused whenever he picks her up. And you're the preacher that everybody hates that dies at the right. end. Okay. That is your all role. Right. Yeah. She kills all the teenagers and fucks all the dudes. Okay. So really the only person killing people in this is Jess, which <laughs> is so apropos. <laughs> but it's not a happy fuck, Jess. I don't want to I don't want you to get a We'll offended. use we'll use Shannon Tweet. It's like a really angry. They're terrified. We'll use Shannon Tweet as her time. stunt double. You're like a screaming banshee. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. You're a man raper. Hey, a weird thing. Um, we chuckled about it a little while ago because because it was weird back then, but it's getting even more weird. Did you see the video of the 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 Boeing plane taking off and the wheel just literally fell off like forty feet off the ground? The wheel just falls off to the ground. There's something really wrong with Boeing planes. Oh, also in 2017. There was a safety engineer working at Boeing who quit and then filed a lawsuit against Boeing for all of the problems that he stated they they weren't willing to fix. For example, if they were short on a product on a product or a piece that needed to be put on a plane that a new plane that's being built, he claimed that Boeing the the people on the in the in the manufacturing process would go to old parts and grab an old part or a part that didn't pass inspection and use that on new planes going out so he made all these claims and stuff uh over the oh, last end of last week he apparently unalived himself <laughs> okay <laughs> which Here's 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 how that goes. 2017, you bring these cases. Nobody sees all these Boeings falling apart. Now, in the last several months, Boeing's planes are falling apart all over the place. Your your claims are vindicated, and then you decide to commit suicide. I'm gonna say a big no to that. I'm gonna say no to that. He got Clinton. So anyway, sure. I'm trying to, I am real hey, uh, Justin Wood just hit us with probably the greatest dad joke. Don't look, but what sound did the wheel make when it fell off and hit the ground? Uh, what? Boeing, Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so it's getting, okay, here we getting go. more and more uncomfortable. Let's see, so here it goes. It's taking off. Just, just rolling down the runway. It's about okay. lifting off. People are like, I can't wait to get to, you know, the Florida Keys. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, this is going to be the best vacation. There's like eight people on there that are like, listen, p more people die in uh, lightning strikes than plane crashes. There's nothing to worry about, honey. Right. And then right here, uh oh. <laughs> Boom. Wall falls off. <laughs> like, wheel falls uh, off. Yeah. Now, the, obviously, this shouldn't be a point of, of comfort, but there's a reason there's like 12, 12 wheels on a plane. It's for redundancy, but still, this is a problem. I, I'm I'm really, I don't like thinking about flying on Boeing planes, but you don't really have much of an option. I mean, you don't, you don't have much of an option. I've, 12 wheels on a plane, by the way, uh, and only two of them are up front. Yeah, right? Which is like... like it seems Kind of critical. Arguably the part that you want to that you want to have you want to double down on there being contact. Because right. I feel like you can still steer it 
if you've got the front wheels, right? It's like yeah. let's put let's put half a wheel on the front and twenty three <laughs> on the tail end. <laughs> yeah. If those wheels on the front go away, also what goes away are your pilots. So that's another the people that could put the brakes yeah. on. They 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 disappear. That's a hard that's a hard lesson. Yeah, I don't know that uh, the answer to that, but um Come on, Boeing, get it together. And if the pilot's having a bad day, everybody's having a bad day. Yes. Yes. Jess is Jess just took That's a Kobe big Bratt. hit. Jess is coughing up a storm She's now. Coughing. Hey, did you see the autopsy uh results from the Kobe Bryant crash? Did oh yeah, this? I did. That that dude was fucked up. Yeah, and his daughter. Oh, that was so sad. Unbelievable. Plus, I can't believe the autop- I mean, there was so little left of him. It was mainly just his torso and half his head. Yeah, he got torn apart. So sad. But I mean, so they sad. slapped the side of that hill at like, it was like 120 miles an hour or something. Yeah. I'll try to, let's see here. Yeah. That, that, those, I mean, I get it. Here's, here's what's frustrating to me is, is in this day and age, that autopsy for Kobe Bryant's death gets leaked, but we still don't have the actual audio uh, from the guy that he and his girlfriend got eaten by a bear. Like nobody's leaking that. That's frustrating to me. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Like then they're not kidding. So if you're unfamiliar, if you're, if you're in the background and you're looking at this and I pulled up an image of Kobe Bryant's autopsy report, uh, these, this is common. I, I, I have to look at a lot of autopsy reports because of, doing the podcast you see these a lot these sketches of a body and what i pulled up here is what's left of kobe and it's basically just his left arm and his torso yeah no legs um and some of his head it's all been torn away they even drew the bone his femur they drew his femur at the bottom showing that like yeah uh also i mean he was basically spaghettified from the belly button down and it looks like an uh, entry and exit wound on his head that took out his right eye and nose and then came out the back of his head. Something tore his right arm off. Man, that is brutal. But, I mean, that's not really surprising. When you smack the side of a hill at 120 miles an hour in a helicopter, there's not going to be yeah, a lot left. Well, and a helicopter, too. So you've got six five or six blades going at 400 miles an hour that are also have to go somewhere after they stop, after they hit the the mountain. So you got a whole lot of moving parts. Oh, it looks like they also. Oh, look, there's his uh, recovered the missing arm. Oh, look at it. They even one, drew his the, tattoo the on the arm. That's crazy. They drew his whole tight te- because it's a bunch of text. They drew all the words from and his the tattoo. bone was coming through. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's brutal, man. Yeah. It's too bad. Um, what did you anyhow? How you doing? I'm good. What did you bring? What did you bring for today? I brought a creepy pasta. I feel yeah. like shit. By the way, uh, breathe in hay and everything. My allergies are going crazy. My nose is running. I'm coughing. My throat is sore. Um. I fought with a weed eater for like two hours yesterday. Had to take it apart, clean the carburetor. It's like that's half the time. Does anybody else feel that way that has weed eaters? Um, that you spend more time fucking with it than you do actually weed eating. Yeah. Yep. I feel like I have to like every time I get the weed eater out, it's like I better get some tools too because I'm gonna have to take this thing completely apart and clean it. I ended up getting a twenty. And then it's volt. like, oh, the engine's running good, but now the. No- what? I ended up getting a 20 volt craftsman one, solved the engine problem. And it's got this crazy thing where you just throw the line through the head and then go ratchet, 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 ratchet. And it eats up, it, it winds itself. It's, I'm not, I, you weren't asking for a solution. I might buy one just for that because that's the part I hate the most. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the, is the head of it. Yeah. It, it solved a lot of this headaches. This creepypasta. It's creepypasta Friday. I don't fucking know if this one's good. I feel bad. Okay. Yeah. So get off my we're nuts. Gonna, we're going to give it to you. I feel good. This creepypasta might be terrible. 
might be good. It was within the time limit that I needed a creepypasta to be readable. We're going to find out together. This might be the greatest creepypasta that's ever written. It might be the worst one ever written. Okay. Let's go on this adventure together. This was written by Gigi Poppy. Oh, Poppy. Oh, gosh. Gigi Poppy, and it's titled, Last Night I Snuck Past My Dad's House. He Almost Caught Me. And I got to say, I don't know how about you, but if the title is any indication of the quality of this, I am not excited. I, w- did you make a noise? Because on, on the Zoom, we uh, did you just moan into the microphone or something? Because it didn't pick it up. It, the track will pick it up. But I went, oh, poppy. OK, yeah, I figured. Yeah, something gross. So, OK, I just want to make sure we're on the. Here we go, and I'm probably going to have to stop and cough and sneeze and snot and everything throughout that. I'm sorry. That's all right. I don't know what you want from me. Let's do this. Here we go. This is last night I snuck past my dad's house. He almost caught me. Estimated reading time, five minutes. Okay. Get your skin summer ready with affordable laser hair removal by trained nurses at Uptown Laser Hair Removal. Book now. It's a new character I'm working on. God that doesn't okay. understand you're not supposed to read everything on the page. Explore the latest bathroom designs with bath experts. Re- you remember the reading mode sidebar you can use? I don't know if you remember that. One teaspoon before bed can burn belly fat. Oh, Try it tonight. <laughs> okay, and we're almost to the story here. Um, Amazon outlet up to 70% off. Great finds. Shop now. Order in the a.m. and enjoy it in the p.m. <laughs> wow. That's fun. At Sullivan University College of oh, Nursing, gosh. there's no prereqs designed to be flexible. Enroll now. Uh, All right. We're finally oh, good. here. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Which dog breeds can coexist oh, with gosh. cats? <laughs> Design trends for bathrooms in 2024. You can book deals now at Ollie's Bargain Outlet. You know what? I'm starting to see a trend, though. Based on what I know you've been working on and what you do and everything, I think they're feeding you ads that they think are relevant because you did read it a bathroom. You've got the dog and the cat. I'm sure you've probably looked up stuff for them lately. They know. Yeah, it's just the amount of ads is like n- nauseating. Look at this. Wow. Look at how many ads. Like most of the screen is ads. Dang. Anyways, here we go. This is uh, last night I snuck past my dad's house. He almost caught me. Okay. And I'll just leave this up so you guys can read along in the back door if you want. Sounds really good. A bit of context. My father left my, not like not my, this isn't con. I'm doing the the story now. I'm reading the story now. Okay. A bit of context. My father left my mother not long after I was born. He was a selfish and incredulous man driven by his own will and desires. Whether I'm his only child, we don't know, but we're skeptical that I'm not. I would visit him as a child and stay over at his house. The usual divorced parents with a child scenario. As I got older, the visits got fewer and fewer and we clashed a lot, both being defiant both being defiant about the other. Eventually, the visit stopped. I couldn't take the arguing, the the heartache, or the rejection from my own father. It was too much. To no avail, we tried to rekindle our relationship multiple times. It only caused more heartache and pain, and gradually we drifted apart. He knows nothing about me now that I am in my 20s, and I'd like to keep it that way, but I know plenty about him. He's blocked me. He's blocked on every social media site. Any form of contact has been severed by me. But every now and then I get I get curious. I want to see what he's up to. So I started making stops by his house. He lives on the other side of town, but I find ways of getting there secretly. My mother knows I do this, but she isn't aware of how often. I slivered to his house at night, shielded by the dark. I peeped through his backyard fence and into his kitchen, just watching him. Watching him with his new family and watching him live his new life, I've seen his stepchildren grow. 
I've seen his grandchildren come and go for weekend visits. I used to be jealous, but not anymore. No, now I'm intrigued. I like to tease my father about the daughter that he forgot and moved on from. I place little reminders of me in his backyard next to his back door. A childhood toy, an item of clothing, something that makes his heart swell and his mind ache, a little reminder that I still exist, despite his lack of contact with me. I even posted one of my graduation photos through his door one Easter morning. Now that took some balls. Dr. Malkin, a powerful antioxidant to support your health. <laughs> okay. Uh, Building Institute was a way to advance where I am now sooner than any other program, says Craig N., a third generation electrician. Contact us today for HVAC, plumbing, and electric, and follow us on Facebook at Building Institute. Now back to the story. (laughs) Okay. But lately, I've become addicted to visiting his house after dark. It's like I can't get enough of prefabricated homes for the modern (laughs) you. Explore options at a lot living. But lately, I've become addicted to visiting his house after dark. It's like I can't get enough of watching his life unfold through his kitchen window. I gaze and I stare through the little cracks in his fence, watching his and his family's every move. I often feel a sense of loss and grief, but not for long. But last night was different. I had paid him a visit around 10 p.m. God damn it. Building Institute was a way to advance where I am now, sooner than any other program. The, the text keeps jumping. That's why I keep reading ads. Just so okay. you know, I'm, I'm like focused on this and then like it jumps up here and I've I, I'm got to look at this fucking dildo smiling holding his diploma. <laughs> <laughs> but last night was different. I had paid him a visit around 10 p.m. twice to be exact. The first time went unnoticed as usual. I hit and I watched. Uh. Nora Jones, Visions Tour 2024 with special guest Mavis Staples. July 11th, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, Blossom Music Center. Get tickets now with Live Nation. <laughs> this, it's starting to sound like Sean Hannity or something where they have to read all the radio ads. It's like the story is so truncated. <laughs> you see what's happening, though, right? I'm in the middle of reading and it. Pops up. Yeah. Like, look, it just happened. Upper right hand corner. Just click on that little icon that looks like a sidebar and, and then select readers. This one? Uh, Hold on. I can't. I don't know if I can see it. Let me see. Yeah. I can't see the top of your screen, but it's up in the right hand corner by your oh. by your face, by your little icon. And then you choose. Uh, And then you choose. And then you click on the drop down and select reading mode. And then you'll have a sidebar drop with just down. the text. Okay, let's see here. I don't have that on my upper right hand corner by your face. There's not a little icon that says side panel when you hover over it. No. I'll have to you know what we'll we'll take care of this when I'll help you with your IT problems when when we're done with the show. <laughs> so. But last night was different. Okay. <laughs> I had paid him a visit until ten PM, twice to be exact. The first time went unnoticed as usual. I hid and I watched, his eyes transfixed by his phone. The second time, around 20 minutes later, I snuck up to the fence again, holding my breath and watching. This time he made his way to the back door and I watched, curious to see if he'd notice me and terrified if he did. But I was frozen to my spot, to my ritualistic hiding place. I didn't know what to do. I watched through the fence, holding my breath. He made his way to the bin, disposing of something before slinking back inside. I let out a brief sigh of relief and continued to watch. He slunk about his kitchen, tidying up and putting the kettle on for a late night drink. And all the time I watched and I watched and I watched. Depend skin guards <laughs> help prevent skin irritation. Shop now. And a side note, they help prevent skin irritation by shielding from irritants in urine. Uh. 
K. You can also watch Destroy All Neighbors on Shutter. Plan starting at four ninety nine. Back to the story. Okay. It felt like I was there for hours. I watched as the light went out, and I figured he must have made his way upstairs. I then had a sudden idea, a longing feeling to go inside and be with him. So I snuck into his backyard, quiet and stealthy. He didn't know I was there. Nobody did. I heard a baby's cry come from upstairs, and I watched eagerly from below as a light went on. I saw a silhouette make their way to what must have been the baby's crib, and then another light came on, the landing light, and soon the kitchen light followed. I dove beneath the kitchen window, anxiety swirling through my veins, my heart pummeling my chest. I could hear the clatter of dishes as someone prepared a bottle for the baby whom I presumed to be the youngest grandchild. Cat work boots. (laughs) The noise then stopped, and I heard footsteps leading away from the kitchen, but the light stayed on. Curiosity overcame me, and I looked through the kitchen window, dying to catch a closer glimpse of his other life. The life he had left me and my mother for. The life he had disregarded for me. Me for. The life he had disregarded me for. I took in the surroundings and saw the glitz and glam of what I guessed to be his new kitchen, and anger swirled inside me. Me and my mother have never been very well off, so seeing his glamorous life, even if it only involved a kitchen, upset me. Our house was a shambles, falling apart, and I didn't say that wrong. It says our house was a shambles. That's how they, that, falling apart. That's proper. I thought it was in shambles. You can say either. It's sort of like when somebody says there are a myriad of options or there are myriad options, Uh, you know. (laughs) Okay, you can say that. (laughs) I'm not going to. Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I took in the surroundings and saw the glitz and glam of what I guessed to be his new kid. Oh, wait. Our house was in sh- our house was a shambles. Falling apart where his house was pristine and new. I stood gawking through the window for what seemed like a decade before I could hear footsteps coming down the stairs again. I waited until the last minute, minute to duck beneath the window, managing to catch a small glimpse of my father, now aged and tired. He looked terrible, nothing at all like the man I had cut contact with. I waited and waited and waited, all the while holding my breath like my life depended on it. After what seemed like a century, the kitchen light flickered and then went out, unusual given that it was a new kitchen. I think this is, I think this as, I I took this as an opportunity to peep through the window once more, even though I hadn't heard retreating footsteps. I raised my head so that my eyes could see over the windowsill. I watched him through the darkness. I felt lost and sad. All I ever wanted was to be loved by him. Unknowingly, I stretched my hand up to the window, silently pressing my palm against the glass. I just wanted to be closer to him. I wanted a dad, my dad. I heard a, I heard a gasp and a clatter as he must have seen me. Rushed footsteps echoed towards the back door, and by then I knew I'd been caught. But what did it matter anymore? I was about to see my dad. He threw open his back door and stood on the doorstep, bewildered and afraid. I stood before him, but he couldn't see me. He couldn't see anything. His confusion and fear made me smile a little. A small revenge for all the heartache he had caused me as a child. A breeze passed through the yard. He shivered before turning away, locking the door and retreating upstairs back to his new family. It's been a few years since I lost my life to a drunk driver, but I still like to visit my dad. I like to remind him that I'm still here, still watching. I am still waiting for the love and life I never received from him. Tonight, I think I'm going to go inside and pay him a visit. Tonight, I think I'll properly make myself known so that he can forever, never forget me. Tonight, I'll make sure he remembers the child he left behind. Oh, oh wait, oh wait. Oh, I had to reset my, my soundboard. I don't have the boom. I don't have the, oh, hold on, hold on. I can do this. Boom. 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 <laughs> I just used Janice's voice Perfect. to make the boom. <laughs> Sign up for Clash of Clans yeah. now and get four ninety nine in tokens. Oh, Kent. Hey, Kent. Um, you weren't here 
when we went through my soundboard items that I had to recreate. So I did Janice. I've added Janice. I also added one right. so when I tell a story where Sam 2.0 is talking. I can, right. I can use his voice. So okay. it sounds a little more like him. And then I um, created a dream sequence as well for when I have to tell a story from my past. And I, I feel like it's, you can really tell that I'm recounting a memory. And then I added two versions for Jess when we, when we speak for Jess. Jess. Right. What is what she said about it? Or talking about something in the day. And the next one is just when she's that's, talking about her That's 2300 Jess. Year 2300 Jess that's been reincarnated and lives in an AI program. Jess unmutes herself to share her feelings, and it's just like, Guys, I just feel like I have to tell you. <laughs> Could you download some cocaine? <laughs> low on cocaine, low on cocaine, low on cocaine. <laughs> no, wait, we're supposed to downplay yeah. the cocaine use. Where are we supposed to? Oh, oh, I remember, I remember. We're supposed to, we're downplaying the 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 cocaine use, but we're upplaying the rate. Was it racism? So to be racist. Yeah. I hate I hate say just say what's the deal with all these minorities in that voice? What's the deal with all these minorities? Jess, twenty three hundred. <laughs> uh, that's fun. <laughs> day in the back door access this sucked five stars <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way of putting it this sucked five stars that's like that's like when i was playing call of duty at the beginning and i got i would just consistently get smoked people hated me having on their teams a guy texted me one time i think i've said this before and he just all he said to me was your skills are brown <laughs> <laughs> that's poetic this sucked five stars that might need to be a shirt <laughs> i love it sucked five stars oh man well that was an hour yeah no you know what i gotta say a whole lot of story and then they just kind of bolted on a uh bolted on a oh yeah i'm dead yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Pretty cliche ending. Not bad. Yeah. We've we've definitely read a lot worse. Yeah, that's for sure. <sighs> um well I brought something I I I've struggled with this, so I actually qualified this with Kent before before I, I decided to bring it today. Uh because I know I know it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, and I'll say that ahead of time. And, you know, most of the time I'm really cautious about that. I want everything to be something that everybody can accept. So that's why I keep my my political comments very right down the middle, right? So everybody can appreciate Yeah, right. Anyway, this one, today what I brought was um, some uh, backstory on characters from a very specific movie a franchise called Hellraiser. So if you're into Hellraiser, you're going to love this. If not, just pause the show and watch the series and come right back. This is Jess's idea. Yeah, Jess was like, why don't we talk about Cenobites and their backstories? And I love Hellraiser. Yeah. And if you don't know who what Hellraiser is, then you've probably been living under a rock, but you've seen the imagery. So if you don't know Hellraiser, Hellraiser is the white, the white bald dude with all the pins in his face. His name's Pinhead. And he's the leader of the Cenobites. Did did Jess Jess just figured it out? Jess didn't know. Jess literally didn't know. So now she's caught on. Yeah. So that's Pinhead. Kent has a picture in the back door access open for everybody to see. Um, if you if you're li just by the way, if you're listening to this and you're like, what is this back door access they're talking about? And you've heard us talk about it. You can be part of that too. Every single episode. Of all of our shows, with the exception of TCK, because Kent's shy, um, we have a backdoor access where people can watch us live as we record the shows. You can find it at patreon.com forward slash 1159 media, and you'll get the alerts. Also, 1159 plus 
dot com uh, if you want them. So anyway, check it out. Raven said that she was 1000 percent convinced she was going to marry Pinhead when she was like seven. And I just I can't help but wonder what kind of childhood that that young lady had where this creature from hell, mind you, with black eyes and needles. Yeah. Also, I'm getting all through all over his face. I'm going to go out on a limb. She's like, oh, he's kind of hot. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, as an adult, Raven, if if this was who she thought she'd marry as a child, as an adult, Raven's list of kinks is reads probably like a grocery shopping list. (laughs) Cause, cause wow. (laughs) Oh. Oh, that's true. Luther says Chase doesn't give him access to the back door. That's yeah, that's because Chase just Chase record. Well, I'm not even quite sure when Chase records because all he ever seems to be doing is editing our other shows. But somehow he produces two other shows. So anyway, I wouldn't mind start doing back doors for TCK. If you want, we can. That's fine. Uh, we just have always deferred to your uh, to your proclivities when it comes to the way you wanted to do your show. So, OK, um, let's jump into this. Cenobites. If you don't know what the Cenobites are, it's Pinhead and then all the creepy, ghoulish looking people on Hellraiser. Each one of them. Characters from hell. Yeah, they're all from hell. And they each became a Cenobite in a certain way. So if you're familiar with like the movie Seven, each one of the people in Seven died because they were the epitome of that one of the seven deadly sins. And so their death was kind of a visual representation of that. Cenobites died or became Cenobites from human form because of something they uh, experienced or did in in life. So let's get into this. So first we have Pinhead, which we mentioned. So originally Pinhead was Captain Elliot Spencer, and he was transformed into Leviathan's servant. So somebody you don't see. Uh, through the Hellraiser series. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kent. Is there an embodiment for Leviathan? Like, is it... I can't remember visually. I can't remember. I can't either. I know that you do... Uh, Pinhead is one of the few characters in the series, in the franchise, where you do get to see his backstory. In part three, um, yeah. there is a scene where he's an army general during... I think it's World, World War, War One, I. Right. And he finds the... Uh, the Rubik's cube, the lament configuration, and the lament configuration, the conf- yeah. and gets turned into Pinhead. Yeah. So, uh, so to to add to that, so he is. So it's also really interesting because every you you watch him, and if you're light on the backstory, you think Pinhead is like the the demon to rule all demons, but he's actually a servant of Leviathan. So there's even yeah. this even more mysterious roll up from from Pinhead. Also, fun fact to know and share, all through the series, Pinhead is played by a man, a brilliant man, Doug Bradley, uh, plays the part so brilliantly. In the remake, in the remake uh, that just came out, I believe in 2022, uh, it's a woman. Uh, yeah, it's a, well, I mean, in the, uh, in the books. In the books, it's a woman. By Clive Barker, he, it was a yeah. woman. And so that was an interesting. So when people were like, "Oh, we're getting all woke," it's like, no, actually, that's yeah closer to the source material, right? Which also, it's a good time to mention that for anyone that read all the Ghostbusters books, they were all women too. So if you didn't like the remake of Ghostbusters, is that true? No, I'm kidding. I was just trying to drum up more support for it because you know, want to be wild if the books were written with Leslie Jones in mind. <laughs> It'd be such a different storyline, such a different one. Oh, I. What if Pinhead was Leslie John? <laughs> uh, Jack mentioned this one time on a Hugs podcast. Remember when he brought up the story of I can't remember her name. It was like it, it was the woman who ended up on the 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 Icelandic or the ice excursion with all the men, and she's the only one that survived. Yeah, and, and he said, "Why are we remake? Why do we remake all these movies?" And just swap out the men characters for women when there's these amazing actual stories of women that never get told. And uh, and I agree with that. I just watched um, Cabrini over the weekend. Uh, 
And if you've never heard of Cabrini, I'm not surprised. But if you've ever heard of Mother Teresa, maybe multiply. Oh, you think I'm not well read? Multiply Mother Teresa by two. And that's Cabrini. That's this woman. And just unbelievable. But we've never heard about her. So anyway, back to the thing. So, uh, yeah, to add to your point here. So uh, Pinhead was transformed into Leviathan servant, servant after losing faith in humanity during the horrors of World War I. His encounter with the lament configuration, which is the box that all these people uh, come in contact the with. The devil's Rubik's yes, Cube. Yes, and, and it has different configurations. And so he yeah. unlocked the lament configuration of the box. And this happened when he, he found it in British India. And that set him on a path of sadomasochism, eventually becoming the uh, iconic Cenobite known as Pinhead. Um, Pinhead's rebellion against God leads to his punishment as a mortal in Hellraiser Judgment, which is one of the movie series titles. Uh, he meets his end in Hellraiser Bloodline, but leaves a legacy as a master of pain and pleasure. Okay, next we have the Chatterer. You remember the chatterer? This is the guy that with the teeth that are always chattering. He's probably the most iconic yeah. uh, Cenobite outside of Pinhead. I'd agree. I'd agree. This one just kind of, it's he's nightmare fuel. So this is Jim. I made a uh, mask of the chatterer, too. What's interesting is, did you, you know how you gave, what, what name did you, Jeffrey? You gave our, our killer in the woods, Jeffrey. That probably would be Chase, right? Chase would be Jeffrey. Uh, ch the chatterer's name is actually Jim. Jim, later known as the Chatterer, faced a grim childhood filled with abuse and neglect. His search for love led him down a dark path, culminating in his transformation into a Cenobite after tampering with the Lament configuration. Despite his gruesome appearance and loyalty to Pinhead, Chatterer's journey is marked by tragedy and a quest for affection gone awry. He is remembered for his, bone, for his chilling presence and tragic backstory, ultimately meeting his end in Hellraiser 2, Hellbound. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and he's kind of the one that, like, everybody thinks of when they think of Cenobots. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Chatter. I'm trying to find an image of the one I made. I can't tell which one I made. And like, Isn't, Here's what's amazing. I figured it would be If on you're Google. listening, you, you, Kent has a skill that nobody else can can brag about having very few. He can go to Google Images and search for uh, actual sculptures of horror movie characters and find pictures on the internet of sculptures that he created that are in people's collections today. That's crazy. Yeah, that was another laugh. The only thing I can admit that I can say I can do that with is if I go to Google Images and search for certain images of where people were trying to do revenge porn on me, but they're all fake images. So good luck finding an original. <laughs> Unless you had a 3G flip phone, you're out of luck, Chuck. <clears throat> next one. Are you going to do, you're going to do Butterball next. Butterball. Time. Yep. His name is Laszlo, known as Butterball in his Cenobite form, epitomizes the dangers of excess his gluttony in pursuit of pleasure led, his down, led to his downfall when he solved the lament configuration. As a Cenobite, Butterball's grotesque appearance and insatiable appetite for pain and pleasure made him a memorable figure in the Hellraiser saga, eventually meeting his demise in Hellraiser 2 Hellbound. Okay, the next one is Angelique. Now, this one, she's oh, interesting. This is a memorable she's one. interesting. Yeah. Originally, a demon princess. And Leviathan's daughter. So she's got kind of a, a different lineage. Uh, Angelique was summon, summoned to Earth through a dark ritual. Her transformation into a Cenobite marked a significant power shift, aligning her with Pinhead in their mission against the Le Marchand bloodline. Despite her efforts, Angelique meets her end due to the Elysium configuration highlighting her journey from demon royalty to a servant of Leviathan's Gash. Uh, Leviathan's Gash. I've heard it, I've heard it called other things. Um, female <laughs> Cenobite. And I've been a servant of Leviathan's Gash before. 
Uh, I are you talking? You're talking about the rock climbing wall, right? That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Want to make sure we're on the same page. All right. A female cenobite named Deep Throat, also known as Fallen, she Deep Throat was once a nun plagued by sinful desires. She was transformed into a cenobite named Fallen after opening the lament configuration. Her transformation reflects her dark fantasies realized, becoming a figure of terror alongside Pinhead. Her sacrifices and allegiance shift throughout the series, ultimately contributing to the saga's exploration of pain, pleasure, and redemption. Then we go to Dr. Kennard. <clears throat> also, it's... it's Oh, this is a good one. spelled or, prena- or spelled Shannard, C-H-A-N-N-A-R-D, but I... Th- well, you could say Shenard. I know Kennard is actually... This guy scared the fuck out of me when I was yeah, a kid, he's, dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a creepy one. Um, uh, a neurologist obsessed with the mysteries of hell and the lament configuration, Shenard's uh, journey into darkness leads him to become a powerful Cenobite after Leviathan's intervention. His pursuit of knowledge and power cul- culminates in a tragic end serving as a reminder of the corruptive influence of the puzzle box and the depths of human obsession. Now, if you're, if you're like, if you right now, if you're going up, this seems really dark for you. I, I just want you to know I'm setting the stage. So for the next never daily, I'm going to do a, a biographical historical listing of all of the characters from the Bible. So we'll offset it. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Um, Ooh, these guys, these guys, this next ones are, are interesting. The wire twins. Remember them? Yep. Fused originally, together. yep. Originally, human twins transformed by the labyrinth. The wire twins embraced their roles as cenobites, reveling in the sinister interplay of pain and pleasure. Their appearance and actions underscore the thematic core of Hellraiser series, blurring the lines between horror and desire. Okay, and then then we've got. Um, some we've got some cenobites that were actually created by Pinhead, the pseudo cenobites. Yeah, like um, CD. There were a couple of these. Yep. So you got Bobby, <laughs> you got Bobby and Rima, and then you got Camerahead and CD Head. How how Camerahead and CD Head got names, but Bobby and L- Rima got to keep their names. I don't know. But they illustrate the varied and gruesome transformations inflicted by the lament configuration. Their stories reflect the personal tragedies and dark fates that await those who tamper with forces beyond their understanding. This re- this reminds me a bit of like CD Head in particular. Um, like he's a scary dude, and you know the CDs are stuck in his skull and in his face and stuff. Uh, which at the time they're like, let's use a modern you know medium to make this really scary. It reminds me of when I went to Disneyland in, it would have been uh, 1994, 94, and they had like, I can't remember what it was called. It was like the Hall of the Future, and they hadn't updated the Hall of the Future in a long time because it was like kind of a space dock with a uh, like a table, a display table of futuristic electronic items and stuff. And one of the items was a CD player. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right. Uh, they they were making a big deal on the little placard next to the CD player about that it had buffer memory so that you could, oh. you could bump the CD player and it wouldn't skip like a record anymore. Like, you know, it had like one megabyte of buffer memory or something like that. It was... I uh, I don't know if how often they that was probably a real misguided uh, adventure at Disneyland because they're like man we're gonna have to update this could you imagine that today they'd be updating that every week every week they'd have to update that yeah all right and then we got um let's see oh we have another set of twins the Siamese twins these are the ones that are fused yes. Mark and Michael Bradley's unfortunate encounter with the Cenobites lead to their fusion into a single entity, epitomizing the cruel whimsy 
of the labyrinth inhabitants. Their story adds a layer of body horror and sibling tragedy to the series, ending with their defeat by the Elysium configuration. Yeah, their face is always always messed messed me up. It, it that there was a there was a pipe that was put between them and then their faces were grabbed by barbed wire and wrapped around the pipe and then the pipe twisted pulling their faces together in kind of like a taffy pull in between their skulls yeah. and it uh, and their bodies are joined too yes yeah yeah at one point in the series they tear apart and i thought that was interesting uh too um because suddenly they each had two arms and that was weird but uh that, okay and then we've got a guy we're we're, we're almost to the le- to the end we've got two left um we've got torso a tribute to the chatterer created by the chatterer beast torso embodies the relentless pursuit of those who wander the labyrinth. His existence adds depth to the, the lore of the Cenobites, representing the endless cycle of torture and servitude within Leviathan's domain. Uh, totally not apples to apples, but Torso always kind of reminded me of Pyramid Head, where his job yeah. was just to kind of roam, uh, sort of like uh, the Minotaur down in his uh, down in his labyrinth, you know, kind of thing. Um, and that leads us to the the end, the Chatterer Beast, a monstrous creation made in the likeness of the Chatterer. The Chatterer Beast serves as Pinhead's pet, illustrating. Yeah, we call him Bruno. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Uh, I think there was I, there was a kid in my third grade class that kind of reminded me of him too. Um, so this this pet illustrates the perverse creativity of the Cenobites in fashioning servants from the flesh of the tormented. Its fate, tied to the Elysium configuration, marks another chapter in the saga's exploration of hellish dominion and retribution. So I got to give it to the Hellraiser uh, franchise in this case because there there is a lot of depth to the characters and. There are, you know, if if you've watched one and you're like, oh, it's all right, you know, this might encourage you to go back and watch all of them. Um, if my mom's listening, mom, I've never watched any of these, so don't worry. Uh, but it kind of reminds me of Thirteen Ghosts in a way, how there's good character development. You know, I was getting ready to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. How it would be cool to do an episode on the backstory behind all Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, because they've all got be really such a cool, cool. backstory. Yeah, and there's very. Uh, there's but I a- will say, if you've never watched Hellraiser, and you're getting ready to watch it, stop at four. Just watch oh. the first three. Yeah, and then that's all you need. You can stop at three. All right, uh, got watch one, two, and three, and then call it a wrap. It, I would, I would, I, I would add to that if you want, if you're interested in the historical components of it and the biographical components. You could watch the 2022 remake too, because it's it's interesting. Um, it, it it there is some story relevance there, but yeah, once after after Hellraiser three, what do we got? Like, I, I believe we have Hellraiser. Hellraiser goes to space. In space. Space. Yeah, space. for some reason, I don't know why we do that with horror characters. Leprechaun yeah. went to space. Jason, Jason. went to space. Uh, uh, who else went? To, I, I don't think we've put chain. We put Leatherface in ch- in space yet. Alien, uh, but I know Leprechaun. Alien was already in space. Um, but then, but then Alien versus Predator, which was kind of well, honestly, I was Alien versus Alien if we're if we're being honest. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, there's been a lot. I just that, don't know why we do that jump the shark thing where it's like, well, we got to take them to space. Yep. Moon and out of all the horror movie characters, how would Jason Vorf? How would Jason fucking Voorhees end up in space? I don't know how. How did he end up in space? Their argument was that the military had taken him uh, to to they had taken him to study him mm, it, for testing uh, on a spaceship, okay, and testing, okay, so he could be constrained. All right, um, and also in Jason X Earth. Apparently, they say in their own movie that Earth no longer exists. Hmm. It's uninhabited and no longer exists. And then at the end of the movie, um, he falls back to Earth <laughs> uh, as a fireball lands 
of all the places he could have landed in Crystal Lake. <laughs> right back. Like, what are the chances? I mean, that's a one in a, in a trillion shot, I would say. That's equivalent to me traveling to space and then just pointing my fa- myself at Earth and landing in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. Like he made it into the lake, just not like on a dock or a bank, you know, thud. He made yeah. it right in the lake. In Crystal Lake, in his own stomping ground, yeah. and there's two teenagers kissing. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, I guess you guys forgot where you said that Earth doesn't exist anymore, and then you crash into Earth at the end of the movie. Such a terrible movie. Uh, so, so bad. So fun. So fun. Anyway, that's what I brought. I didn't know if that'd be interesting, but, uh, you know, um, I, th- I thought it was interesting. I enjoyed that op. I would like to do thirteen. Ghosts. Yeah, let's do thirteen. There's a, there's a couple other. I mean, there's other movies that are worthy of a of a deep dive like that. And let us know in the comments if you liked it or you think maybe we should spin that off and just do a thing every once in a while where we'll kind of dig into a movie. I I you could do a deep dive on Clive Barker. That could be you could do a whole podcast on Clive Barker. Yeah, because that dude is he's he's gay. He's um, into leather and bondage. That's why all the Cenobites are uh, wear black leather. Yep. He's super into the bondage scene, and he's open about it. This is and torture. Um, he might be a he's been HIV subject. positive for like fifty years. That'd be that'd be an interesting TCK almost. Just because, like, I don't, I know, I know. Outwardly, he's probably never. He, we don't know that he's killed anybody, but. Dude's crazy. Amazing artist. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting. Uh, he'll be dead soon, unfortunately. He's in bad shape. It'd be kind of interesting, actually, to do some deep dives on on some really significant... Like, H.R. Giger would be another one to do a, a deep dive on uh, yeah. the, the the mind behind the alien. Uh, Clive Barker is kind of like a, a super fucked up version of, of H.R. Giger. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the storyteller Giger Giger was was a visionary, but um, mm-hmm. also a, a thing that blows my absolute mind that you there's documentaries out there you can watch him do it. But H.R. Giger would just load up an airbrush with black paint, go over to a blank canvas or wall, and just start airbrushing on it. And what you end up is Giger's art. He never he didn't start with pencils. He didn't, he, ev- or an idea, or an idea. <laughs> everything ends up, but everything uh, like the, the, the marriage between mechanics and organic with his stuff is just unbelievable. Yeah. His stuff always has a lot of like, um, for some reason it's always got a lot of like conduits and, and, uh, like kind of proboscis fleshy feeling pops. Yeah. And like it all feels organic, but it looks like conduits and wiring and, and shit. aborted fetuses kind of look too. Like, yeah, it's very unique. It is. It's very also, uh, yeah. So you know, that would be fun. I would enjoy doing that. Maybe we do some bonus content here and there. One of us comes up with a deep dive and we just chatter about it. That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay. So bye. All right. Uh, hugs, everybody. Till next time. Hugs. Bye. Bye. bye.